uh it's like in fallout when you get an operation for bonus stats and weeks pass by for your recovery the world stopped while you adjusted being smarter <laughs> Uh, well, that's, um, that is one of the disappointing things about Fallout is that, like, things don't continue to progress uh, without the player, but it's also cool that things don't continue to progress because they, you know, they, their idea of things continuing to pro progress was the invasion timer and that did not fly well. Actually, no, it's not that the invasion timer didn't fly well. It's the, um, the arbitrary ending timer, the water chip timer that didn't fly well. We, we argued that timer up until the day it, it shipped. And I think they didn't really try any time request, a uh, timed quest again for that reason, except for a couple. They didn't try any time to main quests. What, what do you think about that timer? We need I think it was the best ship. idea we ever had. God, that, that was probably the one thing that we argued about the most before we shipped. And then we kept arguing about it after we shipped and then we finally patched it. Modoc had a timed quest. Was there another time quest besides Modoc? But yeah, um, Tim Kane himself, and I think I dropped that clip somewhere in one of my money, one of my YouTube videos. So Tim Kane himself has, has uh, said he regretted using timed quest, using the uh, making the main quest a timed quest. People don't like timers. Yeah. Yep, yeah, we learned that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the one thing. If I could go back and say if we could change one thing before we ship, I would have taken that timer out, and nobody would have ever known it existed. Yep. Yeah. Although he was, he seemed to be more regretting for using time quests at all. So I'm like, I don't, which I don't agree with. I mean, he, maybe he should have used, it is okay to use time quests for side quests, absolutely. But main quests, yeah. That really prevents players from enjoying the rest of the side quests that you're doing. Recovered Chip Spleen, I think you only have a week to get it back. Oh yeah, yep, yep. Chip Spleen is one. It's another one. Is, is there another one besides that? Um, the time limit is pretty generous unless you walk around without trying to go anywhere. Um, or you could, like, um, if you did, <clears throat> if you repeatedly did caravan quests, it would be, it would, it would uh, suck up the time limit pretty quick, too. Uh, even though the caravan quests don't take as much time as they advertise that they will, or even as the counter will uh, indicate, or the date will, rather, uh, the counter actually takes off w less time. Than the than the calendar does. That's those are the two because the calendar goes progresses farther than the, than the counter does. Uh, even though that you still, if you do four or five of them, you've wasted several months, and you only have 150 days, six months to do the quest in. And some people need a little more time, you know, to so stress people, some people out for some reason. Well, um, it doesn't allow you to feel comfortable doing the side quests. Because I know people who said they played it when it first came out and they set it aside because they didn't like the timer and they never heard that it got packed. And it, and it does stress people out. It's because like they, they're, what it does is it ends the game. Now, if it didn't end the game, if it was just a timer that changed something, then it wouldn't be a big deal. It wouldn't be nearly as big a deal. Like if, if, if after 150 days uh, they had to start sacrificing humans, that wouldn't be nearly as big a deal as ending the game straight up ending the game so like i think that was his biggest mistake it would have been cool if they it would have been much more much funnier and much cooler if you if it took 150 days and then they started sacrificing humans in vault 13 they just started kicking, pe kicking people out of the vault saying we can't support you you know um stuff like that and then one by one they they draw straws so that the last until the last couple people are left just thirsty in the corner <laughs> in the overseer's office or I bet the overseer has a stash of water, you know, that he doesn't let anybody have. Anyway, you know, like that kind of thing. If they had done something like that, this game would have been, one, even better. And two, the one complaint about it, nobody would have really had anymore. Well, there was the quest in the vault about people wanting to leave the vault. That's true. That's exactly it, though. But I mean, like, they could have used that as um, impetus or not impetus, but at least tied it in somehow to the water chip timer. Um, and you wouldn't have had quite so... Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. The main point is that he he ended the game at 150 days if you didn't, or or however, what is it, 250 if you if you uh, get the bonus... I think it's 250? I don't remember. If you get the bonus water from the mer water merchants, it ends the game if you don't get the water chip to him by then. And that's not a that's not a really 
good way of doing it. I mean, or at least it, it appears that the result is that, that that is not a very good way of doing it because people were com uncomfortable doing side quests. And side quests are really fun in that game. But that would change the motivation for the latter part of the game. Come on. Uh, no, not necessarily, because the motivation is the same. It's just that the overseer wouldn't be quite as much of a dick, and it would change the ending slightly. But, I mean, like, well, yeah, because the motivation would still be the same. The overseer wants you to go out and kill the mutant invasion threat that's happening, uh, but he wants you to do it so he could protect the people that are remaining in the vault. Um, and anybody outside the vault, and if they got the water, like, if, any, if, if people die, okay, I will admit that if everybody died in that vault, that would change the motivation because they'd all be dead. <laughs> but still, just arbitrarily ending it, it feels like there could have been something more imaginative, but it's all right. Pretty sure the way he saw it was the game was meant to have replayability, so if you fail, try again, but travel in straight lines. True, true. You can't just uh, you can't just spend the first 150 days just trying to level up. You got to do the side quests and or at least know where you're at. It's not arbitrary. There was a story. That's yeah, there was a story, and and for that reason, there was the same plot to it. Like everybody just dies in 150 days because they ran out of water. But it does. It feels arbitrary, dude. I mean, I know they wrote a story around it to fit it, but it feels arbitrary. Because, like I said, there are more imaginative ways of going about it. Specifically, like, the, the one that I mentioned was just, like, they start sacrificing people on the altar. You know, like, then they just drain their blood and suck the water out of their body or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, you're right. It does, if there wasn't... Well, well, I mean, from a player's standpoint, you don't have to, so there's not a really good reason. But sure, there is a reason. That's true. There is a stated reason. And the designer had an idea. If you travel around with even minor deviation, you can do most things in the game and get the... Yeah, 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 that's true. In 150 days, including going to the globe. You know, you're right. You absolutely can. Because I know people who said they played it when it first came out and they set it aside because they didn't like the timer. You absolutely can. But, like, most people... Like, okay, imagine you're starting the game for the first time. You see this 150-day chip. You don't you don't have any real idea that devs that the devs would have planned for this. You're not thinking about that because you're you don't have any experience with game development at all. And in fact, you don't have much experience with games at all in general. You're a teenager. It's the first time you've played this game. I'm just trying to relate my experience when I played it. I'm like was 15 or something like that. And you didn't even understand you don't even understand how design concepts worked in this in this regard. So you look at it and I would imagine that most people, if they're even if they're not 15, are casual gamers and just kind of get by on the idea that the, somebody made a game. The only hope, your best hope is this is that, is that this is not your first RPG to have encountered, so that you you understand that they'll probably give you the answer between now and then. But a casual person playing this game for the first time will go, I I, I don't know where to go. You give me a direction, but I have no idea how long it will actually take me as a casual player, not, you know, not like into some RPGs, but like maybe they're JRPGs or something like that. They're very linear. This is not a linear game. I have a thing for linearity. I don't like it in my RPG. You can explore anywhere. You have no idea where to find the information. And it's and even then, it's not till the last third of the game that you actually start finding this well, I guess the last half. The last half of the game. Because you can find some of it in, in Vault City. Did you actually start finding this information? I'm sorry, not Vault City. Um, The Hub. You can actually find some of it in The Hub. But you, you like it's only one person in The Hub, for that matter, who will actually give you direct information toward it. And that's the librarian. And then you have to read a specific set of, of librarian documents. You can't just travel around the town and maybe you'll run into it luck if you're lucky. But the only real clue is the is the librarian. So, dude, yeah, I mean, given that they they didn't really, they, they they aren't very specific about where to go, and they have a timer, like, that's that's confusing. That's tough to deal with. I've watched people play the, for, the, for the first time. The thing is, a game with a story that can cause real feelings, real emotion, even some level of stresses. Actually, a good thing, not a bad thing. Yeah, but you can, you don't need a timer to do that. Timer is arbitrary, not not arbitrary. Timer is what I would call fake stress. It's fake emotion. It's it's a cheap trick. 
The better way to do it is to create characters that are memorable with good writing, encounters that are memorable with unique dialogue and unique, um, unique ideas to the encounter. Murder mystery, for instance. And oh, I wish they had done it in the Outer Worlds. I wish they'd had a Cyrano de Bergerac encounter where you could have, or uh, quest where you could have just, um, you could have given good or bad lines to 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 the girl to help her get the date. But no, that wasn't an option. That's too bad. You could just get her a dress, which was dumb. And then the date, when she went on a date with you, she was, she didn't even take a shower. I just, I swear, nasty fucking date, man. You don't go on a date with your face looking like shit, <laughs> covered in schmutz. Parvati deserves better, I swear. Anyway, <laughs> think time is good if they were an option. Well, I mean, for side quests. Absolutely, for side quests, yeah, that totally works. You can do it for side quests. There's nothing wrong with that. The, the problem was the main quest. Now, I think Tim Kaine overstepped or over overcompensated and just decided not to do timer quests at all. I think timer quests are fine for a side quest. I don't think they're that good for a main quest. The main quest that completely ends the game. Now, if it didn't completely end the game, I'd be like, okay, cool. I could understand a timer where something changes in the main quest. Totally up for that. But a timer that's arbitrarily, not, yeah, arbitrarily. I think it's arbitrary because you don't have to. It, the, the choice to end the game is is a bad idea unless it's, unless your own entire point is just to try and get from point A to point B and they tell you where point B is. But they don't tell you where point B is in Fallout 1. Intentionally, because that's not the way the game is supposed to be played. But still they put a timer in there and that's that you you could do one with the other but if you do one without the other it doesn't work there's the fallout one is perfectly playable and, and you should always encourage people just to be just to go along and do whatever they want you know to a certain extent but the fact that it restricts their freedom does does make some people annoyed and i don't blame them um half the team liked it thought it added a sense of pressure a sense of foreboding and you better get your stuff done and all that the other team was like, because of that timer, I'm not doing all these wonderful side quests because I feel like I better go, 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 go. I got through Fallout 1 without any trouble. I think I had to restart once because uh, because the update file uh, borked my saves. But that was it. And uh, there's nothing wrong with like going through Fallout 1. I mean, restarting really helps if you want to if you want to get into it uh, a lot more. It really does help, actually, to get about halfway through it and then just restart the game. Because you know half of the game already, then you just get the other half really quick. Anyway. Uh, the story is fine. Your character would probably feel the same as you. You don't know anything about the world outside the vault, so everything is new to a character and player like the first time. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that, that's true. That's exactly the thing. Uh, is that Everything is new. And, it's, and again, it's an open world. It's not a linear story. It's an open world. I have a thing for linearity. I don't like it in my RPG. That means as an open world that your unlimited amount of exploration makes meeting a timer without obvious direction. And that's what I'm saying. There's not really obvious direction. The only clue is in the hub and only in the librarian. Without obvious direction, a timer makes it tough to deal with. Really tough to deal with. And the story is fine. The story is fine. And the characters are great. They're all good. It, the timer was like the biggest issue. <laughs> for for good reason i think i think it's for good reason but that that just that just points to it being tim kane's first game bard's tale construction set which is the first game i made when i was at interplay he didn't understand that you had to make allowances for the timer he did he did but he made the allowances in the uh in the ease of the quests um he didn't make understand that you you, you should make allowances for the timer so that people understood where to go easier that was his first game, though. There's nothing wrong with that. Because the game I was going to make was Bard's Tale Construction Set. And that was the first game I made at Interplay. He's got a first game. I just wish he would reevaluate his, 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 uh, his understanding of what a timer is a little bit. And be like, you know, it's good if you can, if you can direct people the direction, to, tell people the direction to go, and then... Like expect them to get through it within a certain amount of time. That would that would work just great for a main quest, even if it does come with an arbitrary ending. Just not the way they did it. The water merchants will also mention Necropolis. Don't trade for water. Yes, that's true. They also have their own sort of water source. There's more than one clue. Okay, okay. You, I'll grant that's true. There are two clues, and the water merchant is 
uh, directly in line. The water merchant is directly in line, and people will point you to the water merchants when you're in the hub. That's a very good point. Okay, well, never mind. Never mind. I think my argument might uh, might be somewhat bad. I guess I guess he still had a complaint for it, and so he chose not to. But I, I guess he did handle it pretty well. You're right. There are two clues, and the water merchant one is the more obvious one. It probably works a little bit better, but still, they don't do the water merchants put Necropolis on your map. You have to find Necropolis, I think, from them. I would argue Fallout is a perfect game not to. True. Um, I I only argue I only I'm only saying that for a new player who is not familiar with open world games and game design in general. If this is one of their first RPGs, they're going to have a tough time with it, and the timer is going to freak them out. And I, I, I don't blame them. Uh, the idea of... And, and this is why Bethesda has repeatedly gotten, gotten more and more players, uh, is because they continually dumb down the RPG mechanics. I don't like that. I think they could have hit a balance somewhere between Fallout 3 and New Vegas. Instead, they went dumber than Fallout 3, which sucks. And New Vegas was kind of Fallout Two light anyway. I wish they'd I wish they'd made Fall New Vegas a little more a, a little more intensive with the the skill requirements and stuff. But still, it's not it's not bad. It's not that bad. But yeah, it just the the idea for a game developer in general is obviously to get the the largest audience that you want into it, and that's what Bethesda is aiming for by dumbing down the game. And uh, Obsidian is going the other direction. At least they're trying to work a fine balance. Whereas Tim Kaine and his and his development group um, were more just trying to make an RPG for RPG nerds, which is cool. Which is part of the reason why this game is awesome because it's an RPG for RPG nerds. But it makes it difficult for to get newer players in, which is frustrating. And which I understand, which is which is a good reason not to in include a timer in there for that kind of stuff. I would argue if a human has never played a game, playing Fallout would not necessarily be the f yes best first game experience ever. Yes, exactly, exactly. That that's you you understand exactly what I'm saying here. That's exactly it. It's it's not perfect. It's not that easy to get into the first time. You got to play it a couple times, and when you once you get it, once you get it through one or two half characters, uh, you start understanding how the mechanics work. You'll you, actually you'll probably fully understand how the mechanics work at that point, and um, you just go around clicking all the people, and then you've read half the dialogue as it is already. Anyway, interplay slogan was game, games by gamers for gamers, though that's true. And just Tim Kane was just a new game developer, is all, and but that's true. <laughs> I don't. I think a Bethesda's slogan is, uh, "Buy buy programmers for anybody who will buy it." <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, at least that's what I feel like it is. Because the first patch was just like if you had told a whole bunch of people that you were from the vault and that you were looking for water, this timer started that no one knew about, <laughs> and they would that come the and raid, mutants yeah. were going to come destroy your vault, yeah. and so that was the first one we removed. But you know the one we're talking about is the. Yes, I'm sorry, you occasionally yeah, get a video a showing point, yeah. like we're low on water, and then yeah, 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 the guy yeah, yeah. slumped over, yeah. and then finally he was unconscious. I was thinking the mutant invasion timer, which we that was one we took. No, out. No, I'm thinking I was thinking the water chip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we argued and argued and argued and argued and we finally did take 